Here. These are some pictures showing examples of how we do that, how we applaud and congratulate our students for effort. Uh, the trophy, for one, uh, was awarded to a fifth grade class for reading the most books, not necessarily for being the most proficient readers, but the kids who worked the hardest and spent the most time at it. Uh, we have countless examples of students who weren't necessarily the fastest 
readers, but they work the hardest at it. Diane Graham, seated in the back, our excellent LLC director. She is instrumental in inspiring our young readers. Uh, students every day are flowing to our LLC to be able to put that X or check mark on, this, on their uh, graph, to say that they've read a Caudill or a Monarch or one of the new novels in our library. They run to Mrs. Graham to get a quick verbal quiz, and somehow she knows each of these books so well that she can ascertain whether or not the kids have read the books and she can applaud them for their effort. This quote from the Book Whisperer says, I am a reader. A flashlight under the covers carries a book everywhere I go. Don't look at my Amazon bill reader. I choose purses based on whether I can cram a paperback into them, and my books are the first items I pack into a suitcase. That's written by Donald Miller. And that quote demonstrates what we strive to create in our modeling, motivation, and the, and the allowance of time and space to read. These pictures demonstrate some of the ways that we do that. Uh, through Donald Miller's book, we discovered and, and, and recognized that not only do we need to give kids time to read individually, but we, we try to give them fun ways and comfortable ways to do that. Daily Five and Cafe, the next two books, led us to incorporate a structure that allows each student the time to individually conference with readers and see each child in a level guided reading group. Our reading team put together and organized what we call the book room. This book room has thousands of student texts that they have leveled so that each of our students can check out these groups of books and use in their guided reading each day. It is uh, a great resource for all of our classroom teachers. Classroom teachers then train and engage our, our students in daily five activities, which are pictured here. Read to self, read with a partner, listen to reading, work on writing, and working with words. Kids are given choices throughout the day to work within these five areas, while the classroom teacher is individually conferencing with readers and teaching guided reading groups. Lastly, I want to leave you with one more piece of visual evidence if our technology is working for us here. Uh, that demonstrates our students and staff love for literature. It's just the last minute or so of a lift up video that our students and staff made this year as motivation for our annual reading assignment. This uh, last minute of the video will conclude my presentation. Once again, I thank you um, for the chance to talk about the great things about Madison School. <laughs>
Thank you, Mrs. Zentar. Good evening, board members. Uh, we have two recognitions this evening, and we're going to start, first of all, this evening with the step team from Wheaton North High School. Jackie Morgan is here, is a coach of the team. As board members know, we always recognize state champions. Well, this particular team at Wheaton North is state champions. So I invite Jackie up to uh, talk a little bit about their season and the success they had this year at Wheaton North. Welcome, Jackie. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. I just want to share with you the hard work that these young ladies did. Our first trip to a competition was the DVC. We placed fourth. We got a lot of feedback and things we needed to work on. We worked on it. We went out again. We went to Golden Brook for a regional competition. Again, we placed fourth. We got a lot more feedback that time. The next competition was the next week, and we went to Maine East High School and we won the main East Regional from all the hard work that they did. That qualified them to go to state, and the rest was history. We went to state and we won. But what I'd like to share with you is, five years ago, the Illinois Dream Building Association had Wheaton North Step Team come in exhibition to show them what stepping was so they could add the category. So it's like it came full circle. So I am very proud of them, and I would like to introduce all of them to you. First, we have Jasmine Bryan. She's a junior. <laughs> Kenny Berkeley, she's a sophomore. <laughs> Caprice Dixon, she's a freshman. <laughs> Niera House, she's a freshman. <laughs> Natasha McClellan, she's a junior. Deja Powell, she's a sophomore. And Johnny Robertson, she's a sophomore. Now the next four ladies that I'm going to introduce to you, I call them the squat squad, because after the two competitions that we placed last, they came in as peer mediators to help us really understand the feedback we got and get down to business. And they were brutal about it. So I would like you to understand, and I want you to give them a real round of applause, because they're why we want to stay. Their names are Tia Lindsay, and Tia is a junior, Aries Jordan, Aries is a junior, Kendra Berkeley, she's a sophomore, and Khadija, Khadija Berkeley, she's not here, she had to work, she's a sophomore. Now, I understand it, Coach Morgan. Is there going to be a demonstration here, or are they going to come up and shake their hands? They're going to do a little step for you. All right, that's what I thought. And then we'll congratulate each one of them.
I wondered if you had something to add this fall. I, I do, I do. Um, I just can't tell you how proud we North is of our step team. Uh, they won state, but they also walked into our high school gym where they received a standing ovation from 2,200 teenagers uh, based on their talent. And I would like to really recognize Jackie Morgan as their coach. She gives credit to other people, but she really is the heart and soul of the step team. And she's turning 70 on Friday. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Right. We also have one other recognition this evening. Uh, one of our teachers, Mr. O'Grady from Monroe Middle School, is here this evening with Mr. Buck. Principal, I'd like to invite them up to the podium. Uh, Mary Claire was also recognized in her own professional organization uh, with a very special award. I'll let Mr. Buck uh, explain the details. Welcome. Hello. Uh, thank you for having us. Uh, I'm happy to recognize Mary Claire O'Grady, our LLC director at Monroe Middle School, for being appointed by the Lincoln Library Press to a select group of librarians to help share, shape the content and design of the Fact Site, which is an online research portal marketed to schools and public libraries. Mary Claire is one of seven middle school libraries, librarians invited to join the Board of Advisors. Monroe consistently ranked as a fact site top user. Recently, Monroe ranked number one among all fact site users. Example of students using fact site in Monroe are as follows. Our eighth graders use fact site Shapers of Society database as a historic biography to research famous people of the 1920s. Our seventh graders completed a research into the literary genres covered in fact site's essential information database. And sixth graders researching the topic of their own choice, used sports champions, essential information, and American history to research wide-ranging subjects from athletes to diseases. Eric Claire says the appointment is really a testimony to the importance of collaboration in improving student learning and believe that teachers of Monroe plan great research activities for students and are always on the lookout for resources that are both authoritarian and written at a level that students can comprehend. This is a great recognition is also a reflection of the district's 200 commitment to information literacy as a vital component of the 21st century's learning. And so I got to sit with her because obviously that I, I wanted to see what this was talking about. So her and I got to sit together today. Um, and it was really exciting to see what the kids get to look at and what information and technology they get to use to reach and research these things. And so it was very cool. And then we started to talk about other things, and I'm going to brag about Mary Claire a little bit too. Mary Claire started uh, Audible, like a, if you've heard of Audible account for, for um, audio books. Um, we now have some audio books that students can download. And also we have um, like a Kindle, I guess, and I know it's a different, but um, some downloadable digital copies of books that we're starting to do too. And so um, we're very excited about all that. <laughs> Very excited for her um, her recognition um, for today. So thank you very much. Just to follow up comment that Mr. Buck and um, Ms. O'Grady that the board members have had uh, audience members in the community. This is a prime example of 21st century skills. I know we talk a lot about that, but these types of resources and this type of dedicated staff provides our opportunities for our students to use those 21st century skills on a daily basis. So thank you once again and congratulations. Thanks for everything you do for our kids. That concludes recognitions and achievements. Thank you, Dr. Harris. No, mine didn't. Let me reach out a little bit. Okay. Other comments?
right now, well, it, this is the point in time where we uh, entertain public comments. Uh, while public comments are important to the board, uh, uh, we, there's our policy not to take action on the item until time has been taken to gather information and discuss all options. Uh, we ask that you keep your uh, comments to three minutes. Uh, and when you come up, please state your name and uh, your address. Uh, we have one person signed up, Jane Sasta. First, Madam President, members of the Board of Education, uh, thank you for allowing me to speak here this evening. Uh, my name is Jim Sostak. I'm the Senior Regional Vice President for GCA Services Group. I'm uh, also a lifelong resident of DuPage County. I'm sorry. We are the current provider for custodial services to the district. Uh, we've enjoyed a nine-year relationship with District 200. We were the low bidder on the previous two bids, the low qualified bidder. And I believe we're the low qualified bidder on this current bid. If any action is going to be taken here tonight besides awarding this contract to GC Services Group, I would hope that, that action would be to table this decision for more information. Um, I encourage that because in the public bidding process, uh, a lot of information is shared, uh, a lot of thought, time, effort, dollars go into making our decisions. We've given you a very good, responsible bid, a very cost-effective bid. And to uh, entertain anything along the lines of throwing these bids out, obviously, in my opinion, gives you say, this uh, is now all Them out, bid again, continue to bid, price continue to go down along with that service. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you, Mr. Sister. Now go to the superintendent's report, Dr. Harris. Thank you. Again, good evening, board members. Um, several items this evening I wanted to update the board on since we were together last in a formal business meeting. Uh, we had uh, inclement weather again, and uh, just uh, as you noted on the consent agenda this evening, uh, we are now reappointing the last day of school one more time. I can tell you after 27 years of public education as a teacher, <coughs> building administrator, district level staff, um, I have never seen a snow day on March 5th. I've never had a flood day when we closed the entire district on April 18th. So uh, it is, certainly has been a unique spring. I think the students and staff and, uh, uh, certainly recognize that in the community as well. So I uh, do ask that you uh, once again approve the last day of school to see me on the consent agenda. And I can tell you uh, I would like to also commend our um, staff, our 12 month staff that came in on that particular day back April 18. It was quite an interesting morning, early in the morning, and uh, not an easy decision to be able to cancel school that day, but I can tell you it was the right one. Uh, at that particular moment, I was not 100% confident, but based on what I was hearing from staff across the district and the public authorities, it ended up being the right decision. So, um, but we will have to go to school on June 6th, so um, we will be assigning that additional day to our end of the year calendar to this evening. Second thing I wanted to update the board on and the public briefly was the charter school situation. As board members know, we held our, our hearing in March and uh, had many questions, many, many questions about the charter school that was proposed to us. The Board of Education took action on April 10th at the last business meeting to reject that charter school proposal um, because of the significant amount of questions and concerns that were uh, throughout that proposal. Um, under Illinois state law, the charter school now has the option, which actually they did today, they filed an appeal. Uh, I got the letter this afternoon at 4 o'clock um, with the um, State Charter School Commission, and they um, do intend to appeal that decision. Um, and the, under the law, the State of Illinois Charter School Commission does have the authority to override local boards of education if they believe it's appropriate. Um, I can tell you that this particular charter is unique in many fronts. Uh, it, it is one, and I know board members know this, 
that 18 different school districts are part of this particular charter. It's virtual. Uh, so there's a couple issues there that have never been in front of the Charter School Commission before. Um, on May 15th, next week, the Commission has indicated they're going to have their meeting to decide one item, not to have the hearing. They're going to decide whether this hearing is going to be a joint hearing, where all 18 school districts will have a joint one hearing, or whether we will have 18 separate hearings. And I can tell you there's lots of attorney letters and opinions going back and forth, and our council has requested our own hearing. Uh, that is our position at this point. We would like to sit, uh, be able to uh, state our position in front of the State Charter School Commission. That remains to be seen what's going to happen. We have stated our objection that if they choose to go a different direction, that we object to that on a legal standpoint, that we are not getting our option there. So I wanted to make sure the board was fully aware of the current situation regarding the charter school. One side note with that, and I know board members are aware of that as well, there is a current piece of legislation that just came out of the Senate Education Committee yesterday afternoon, it was approved, 93, uh, to go to the full Senate for vote, that is House Bill 494. That particular bill will put a one-year moratorium on virtual charter schools. The other issue that I believe is significant in this case, because the current legislation does not even mention virtual. It has no rules, no guidelines, no um, you know, process and procedure for virtual charters. And so therefore, what we're asking, and we went the legislative route as well, and I see we all 18 school districts, to pursue this legislation um, to put a moratorium, not to end it, but basically put a moratorium for a year to uh, review it more and have specific rules to deal with this unique situation. Um, it did pass. I am cautiously optimistic that the full Senate will vote. I know there uh, are little representatives who are down there counting heads now. This is when it does get called out of the Senate floor to make sure that we um, uh, do receive that support and hopefully that bill will pass next week. Uh, my understanding is we get called sometime next week. So we've got two different fronts going. We've got the actual commission. We've also got a piece of legislation uh, to slow things down. So we will see what happens in that. Are any questions from the board in regard to charter school? I will certainly keep you posted as, as this thing unfolds over the next few weeks. Um, another topic and while I'm on the state is uh, the budget. Um, and as you can see, it is a future topic of, uh, for our agenda. Um, the number one issue right now is revenue. Uh, we know where our expenditures sit, we know what we would like to do, we know what um, some of our expenses are. We also have a wish list, as some of you are aware of, things we would like to do. Uh, we are waiting to, to see and determine um, our exact <coughs> revenue streams, specifically from the state. Um, actually, uh, I was on the phone with one of our representatives, and she was asking me questions about uh, GSA. You know, they were having discussions about whether or not it's going to be, uh, what's going to be funded at. Um, this current year was funded at 89%, and uh, they are concerned about that number. We did our preliminary budget projections at 85%, if you remember that. We were projecting that they are going to have funds. So uh, we'll see where it goes. I uh, shared with with uh, Representative Ives that I believe I the priority for us as General State that she had asked and called. I appreciate that, and I certainly um, uh, appreciate the phone call and told her that I believe that would be our position that General State Aid is of importance to us. Uh, obviously, other things are too, but General State Aid is a lifeline. That's our quarterly payments. That's what we need the most. Um, the, also, the federal government has uh, funded the title grants. We were a little uh, uneasy about that. Uh, they have indicated to us that those are going to be fully funded uh, to the levels that we expected. I say fully funded, what we thought was going to be there. And um, so we are uh, excited about that. Never know. Federal government has its own budgetary challenges. And uh, if you're watching what's going on in Washington, it's not a lot different than Springfield. But they have indicated they are going to fully fund those. And the last item, and again, I know board members are fully aware of that, is pension. Uh, the public pension situation in the state of Illinois, as you know, we have allocated dollars uh, under the assumption that we thought we were going to have to pay some portion of that moving forward uh, in our projections. Um, not sure. And the House has their version, the Senate has their version. I think they're going to vote on it tomorrow. Um, they're different. One, uh, the cost shift, uh, Speaker Madigan has decided to put that on the agenda for tomorrow. It's my understanding. I got that email this afternoon. So, 
Things are moving in Springfield, and uh, we certainly are going to be watching that closely because that's a, that is not only a, that's an expenditure issue, but something we have to pay very closely uh, close attention to um, at, at our expense side. So that's just some of the updates on the budget scenario. As some of those things become more clear over the next three weeks, uh, the General Assembly can, uh, closes on May 31st. So by then, we will hopefully have an answer on budget and, and a, a revenue stream. So uh, more details will be brought forth at that point. I anticipate us having a broader discussion of the budget um, at the June board meeting. And we will have more uh, answers uh, to some of those uh, questions. Any questions about the budget situation at this point? Just a question about the uh, cost shift that's possible when we you know, talked about or maybe voting that tomorrow. It, is it generally matched what we anticipated in terms of how it might be spaced up? I will say this to my knowledge. Um, you never know. There's a lot of shell bills. There's a lot of conversations going on, I think, behind the scenes, um, and they're looking uh, to cut a deal that, that uh, could pass the General Assembly. Not sure if it's going to happen. Um, we, we had, if you remember our projections, we anticipated uh, half of a percent of that obligation over the next several years. And so it was approximately half a million dollars is what we put in our projections. Um, that's what we, I've never heard any other number than that, but I don't know, I'm not sure. And that's even if it is, you know, for that cost shift uh, issue is very contentious, not only in the suburban area, but also downstate. Um, quite frankly, a lot of districts will struggle significantly uh, if that shift is made. And I know uh, the General Assembly is aware of it. Any other questions? Yes, I want, uh, what is the, uh, the current perception of if it is passed and it gets passed down, the likelihood that it will be incurred in the next year by the local community? What the conversation has been around, if they were going to do a half a percent over the next, was it uh, eight years, 12 years? I don't remember this part of it. I, I forget the exact. But basically, no, just our total obligation for year $7 million. Uh, next 14 years, just did a quick math. 14 years, thank you. Uh, I had that right off the top of my head. Uh, we, $7 million a year is what our obligation is if they were shipped back to us. What's being discussed, they know districts can't handle that. There isn't a district out there that can handle all that burden in one year. And it would be every year, for ever. Um, what they're talking about is, is breaking into a half a percent per year accumulated out of the time. So for us, that would be a half a million dollars per year added every year for the next 14 years, until we were pulling funding. Yeah, I think the question I'm asking though is that would litigation potentially prevent immediate impact of that? That's my understanding. I, I'm just wondering if you heard anything different. Not to my knowledge. Um, you know, they set the rules. That's part of the issue here. The General Assembly sets the rules. They hold all the cards. They hold all the cards for funding. They hold all the cards for the, the pension itself. That's part of the issue. You know, and that's what the, really the debate issue is. They, they set the rules for the pension system, and then if they push the cost back on us with no voice in, the, in how it's set up, I mean, Taxation without representation there at its best, you know, go back 125 years. Yes, it is a it is a concern. But I think uh, what, what uh, Mr. Matheson made at the end is that there's good uh, suggestions that unions can challenge house version of the pension control. And there are at least eight retired teachers who may challenge the Senate version. And if those are challenged, then the court should impose an injunction against the implementation of that, that may impact cost as well, but nobody can predict the future of the Until they actually act on something, uh, you know, and, and I think it remains to be seen. There's constitutionality issues. Uh, you know, if, if a judge would put a stay on it, you know, then everything as is until it runs through the Constitution the process. So I think it's, we just watch the media. I'll forward any information I receive via email. Um, I do know uh, all the professional organizations are involved. This is probably about to add something. Just I, I, the constitutional piece, I think, doesn't in, isn't an impact on us on the cost per, uh, and so they could separate that piece out. I don't believe there's any constitutional 
preclusion to extend, extend the burden our way. So if the, if the legislator wanted to shift that piece out of it, if it became subject to some type of political or, or legal action, uh, that that couldn't still happen. I think it's a separate, it's not a constitutional issue. And that's why Speaker Maddox is separated. That's why he passed the bill he did. Now he's coming back tomorrow to talk about the cost shift. I think that's exactly why. One last item. Um, as just a reminder to board members, graduation uh, is Saturday, May 25th. Uh, this year, as you uh, recall, yeah, we are at North Central College due to the one year hiatus from uh, the College of DuPage uh, because they are under construction. So we are at North Central College. Board members will be getting information uh, within the next week or so with details about parking and time frame and so on. Uh, Wheaton Mournville South ceremony starts at 9 a.m. that morning and Wheaton North at 2 p.m. So again, more details will be coming, but I just want to make sure all board members have that on the calendars, especially our two new members. Uh, it's an all-day Saturday event, but certainly it's a celebration for District 200 as our graduates uh, move on into the rest of their life. So that concludes the superintendent's report. Thank you, Dr. Harris. Now we move to the consent agenda, and we have Okay, I have 19 items on the consent agenda. Uh, acceptance of a gift to Hawthorne Elementary School, acceptance of a gift to Pleasant Hill Elementary School, acceptance of a gift to Franklin Middle School, approval to post revised policy 6.50 school wellness for community review and comment, approval to post revised policy 7.100 health examination, immunization, and exclusion of students for public review and comment. Appointment of District Representative to DuPage, DuPage West Cook Governing Board. Approval to post pre-calculus A curriculum. Approval of freshman and sophomore English I-level curriculum. Approval to post pre-calculus A textbook. Approval to set the last day of school for the 2012-2013 school year. Approval of a truck bid. Approval of building permits for a Lincoln North High School and Lincoln North High School. Approval to dispose of surplus assets. Approval of resolution appointing treasurer and approving the treasurer's bond. Approval of treasurer's bond coverage. Approval of the resolution designating depositories. Approval of bills payable and payroll. Approval of minutes April 10, 2013, open and closed. And approval to disturb recordings of closed sessions prior to December 2011. Approval of personnel report to include employment, resignation, retirement, and leave of absence of administrative, certified, classified, and non-moving staff. Are there any items any board members wish to remove from the consent agenda? Okay. All right. So we're going to remove item 18. Right. Okay. Any other uh, requests to remove agenda items from the consent agenda? Motion. I move to accept the consent agenda, agenda um, removing item 18. Second motion. Moved by Mr. Swanson, seconded by Mr. Roman. May we have a vote, please? Is there any discussion? Not the only way I have done. Assembly, call the vote, please. 
Mrs. Watson? Yes. Mr. Broman? Yes. Mr. Madison? Yes. Mr. Gambiani? Yes. Mr. Paulson? Yes. Mrs. Intuhar? Yes. And it just gave me a All right, now we have uh,
we could bring it back at the next board meeting. Um, there's not an urgency right now. They're not like on some timeline or deadline, so I do know. Uh, and the Park District has not approved it yet, so it's on their agenda for next week is my understanding. But uh, we would certainly work with staff there. And I, I, we've been working with them all along, so this is not, um, you know, out of the norm. Let's put it that way. Um, but certainly, if the rest of the board agrees to this, we'd be happy to do that. Anything else, Mr. Furley, in your conversation that summarizes it? Well, I guess um, my feeling is that uh, Mr. Groman raises some, some good points, but I don't want to confuse staff work with board work. And it seems to me that the board concept here is that we'd like to have a cap on our uh, exposure and we'd like to have more input to it. So personally, I would be more comfortable tabling it and allowing staff to go and, and work with the park district, and not necessarily to a certain specification that we have tonight, but to find what's agreeable to both parties so that you can bring it back next time with some assurance that it would be acceptable to both. That would give us some latitude because it's not assuming if you were to approve it with this recommendation, they may not, they may have an issue. So then we're going to be playing back and forth. It may be best just to give us, you know, direction, you know, with the concerns here, if the board in general is in agreement here with the topics and the issues, we'll go back and work with them to bring back everybody's time. Yeah. I agree entirely with Rose, but I, old habits are hard to break, and um, I have to remember that I've retired from the practice of law and I've suspended my license, so my language should not be tendered to the uh, park district as something um, from the council, and that we should allow the staff to work out this language. Mm -hmm. It's just these were the concerns I had, and this is the best way I knew how to bring uh, the gentleman. Take it as such, Mr. Rowe. I, I uh, personally look forward to working with the Park District uh, uh, in the future. I think uh, you know, they're a very great uh, organization. And uh, I, I should suggest tabling this at uh, this time. Okay, so this is a new thing to me. Uh, okay, so, so what do we need to do? Why don't you rescind your motion? In that case, I withdraw my motion to approve. Do I hear a motion on the floor to table the decision on the uh, intergovernmental agreement to the next meeting? I so move. I second it. Second by, second by Mr. Roman. Mrs. Mrs. Senator, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Madison? Yes. Mr. Roman? Yes. Mr. Gambiani? Yes. Mr. Paulson? Yes. Mrs. Swanson? Yes. Yes. Talk about technology now? Yeah. <laughs> well, we are anyway. If you went, we can So now we will Custodial cleaning services bid, Diane Harris. 
Yes, um, I'm going to have Mr. Farley update the board on this custodial uh, claim services bid and uh, provide some details on information that we received today. So, Mr. Farley. Thank you, Dr. Harris. Uh, as the board is aware, this is the, probably the last major bid that we had this year. We did legal services, we did our transportation uh, services, both which had a change of service contractor. Um, we also uh, bid out custodial services and opened those bids on uh, April 24th. Um, as you, I'm sure you looked through the report, there was six vendors that bid and one vendor was considerably lower than the rest. Uh, we did scope reviews, as we normally do with bidders, uh, of the bottom of those three bids, price-wise. It um, became clear that the low bidder had uh, misinterpreted the uh, intent of the bid and the number of hours the district required for cleaning staff and reduced the amount uh, of that bid. Um, and that is why their bid price was, was considerably lower. They also uh, put in a number for supplies that was uh, quite low compared to the rest of the district and probably unattainable uh, to uh, service the needs of the district. Uh, based on that information and that scope of the, the district uh, administration was recommending uh, that we go forward with the GCA, who was the second low bidder, who met all the qualifications and specifications of the bid, and, as, and um, as did Aramark, who was who the other scope of So uh, the other five bidders had met the uh, requirements, but GCA was the lowest qualified bidder at that point. Uh, ADM, who is a little bitter, uh, feels the bid specification had a clarity issue that they uh, didn't interpret. Um, it's worth noting that the district had two mandatory walkthroughs of all our buildings. We also had a mandatory free bid that allowed all bidders the opportunity to ask any questions to get any clarification. Uh, addendums were issued to all vendors with all those questions and all those responses over this time. Uh, but ABM still believes that they uh, bid it to the scope of uh, what was bid. Uh, Mr. Sostek made comments tonight because there, because a lot of this information has occurred within the last few days here from ABM, uh, and their pushback on this that we should either uh, uh, award it to ABM or decide to table or um, reject all bids and then rebid uh, uh, the work. Um, Administration feels that the rebid uh, is you know, rejecting the bids and starting over. There is some fairness issues that you do because you now have everybody's numbers out on the table. Um, if ABM is to bid correctly, uh, from our point of view, uh, you know, they, you know, the numbers are out there. So, um, you know, tabling it or or in allowing us more time for some due diligence or rejecting all bids is something the administration can work with to get, uh, look at it or uh, rebid to try and get it back out of the streets. But again, we've, the numbers aren't out there. So the issue is at hand here. You know, you see our recommendation. Recommendation from the administrative staff was to move forward with GCA. Um, however, you know, with the, the conversation that we had today with the apparent lowest bidder, they were, uh, you know, believe that we uh, are not taking the most bid, they believe they have the specs. Um, after conversation with them, here, the bottom line difference was that they were going to provide less hours of service than, than the other, all everybody else had bid on. Because they, they believe they have the spec that they did. Uh, uh, the bid was clear to all of the vendors except for one. So that was very confusing for Mr. Farley and I as we were listening today. And he also mentioned the cleaning service, or the cleaning supplies. Significant difference in the cleaning supplies. And there's no way you can provide cleaning supplies with all 22 sites for the amount that they put in in their bid. So there's, you know, there, there is concern here with that particular low bid. However, they were adamant on the phone today that we were not accepting the lowest bid because they believe they met the specs of the bid. We believe that it could be an inferior service, hence the dilemma. So the, the issue here at the table this evening um, is whether or not to table this issue and direct staff to go back and do more due diligence on it to try and get it out. We could reject all of the bids, and we did. We could do that. Um, certainly, you can understand the risk there. If not all the numbers are on the table, it creates problems for our vendors. It truly does. And um, um, another option would be is to go back with our current vendor and uh, extend for a year 
and uh, come back and rebid it next spring. That is another option that we could do. We chose to go out to bid this year. It had been a while, and it was the right thing to do. However, that is an option that we could, um, that we could reject the bids and we could go back and extend for one more year. It's allowable under the law to do that. I'm not sure that we have had time to have that conversation. It is something that we could pursue. So there really, and I would be curious where the wishes of the board. I wish I had a clear recommendation at this point. Uh, there's exposure uh, all the way around here. There's, you know, there's some um, issues uh, in the bid process. I believe our staff did a great job at their due diligence there. Um, however, when you do go out, there is interpretation issues, and that's why I just want to make the board aware that the uh, procedural bidder here believes they're not getting the bid on this contract, even though we believe they did not meet the specs of the of the bid process. Questions from board members? So when you say exposure, are you talking legal exposure? Yes, we want exposure. You know, for the bid process, not accepting the lowest bid. And you know, under no one law, that is our obligation. However, we always have to, we always have latitude if they we, if we believe there's an inferior service or if they don't need to meet the, the specs of, of the process, which we believe is the case here. We believe we're going to have an inferior product if we go with that particular bid and that peasants. Could you uh, expand a bit on the, the supply cost component that you closely analyzed that, that gave uh, an impression that it was misbid? I'll let Mr. Farley speak to the details on that. Sure. Uh, when we did our scope review, uh, ABM, uh, one of the members of the ABM team noted that he made a decimal error uh, instead of 0.01 on uh, his use of calculation of determining supply cost per square foot, he bought and used 0 .001. Uh, his total supply pricing for uh, the entire district, the entire district, less the two high schools in Hubble, was $19,000 for the year. We're talking everything from paper products, cleaning products. Uh, the other vendors had numbers that were in hundreds of thousands. Uh, so uh, ABM said they will stand by that number and um, you have to have the concern about uh, what level of service, if even if they honor that number and can absorb that cost. Uh, you know, that's a concern of mine. Uh, as an example, for everybody knows the ad building, they had $188 for cleaning supplies for the entire building for the year. Um, that includes you know, toilet paper, and, you know, paper towels, all the cleaning solutions, everything. On that item, uh, you know, I think it's inappropriate to rebid and, and offer this, uh, you know, detailed information to all the parties. Uh, you know, again, if there's an error in a bid that, uh, you know, that we can examine and see that it clearly, I mean, it sounds like we're talking about this probably if it's a decimal point off, it's practically a $200,000 change, which if I look at the detail of the bid examination, I think that puts it very close. Uh, you know, I, I would be very leery even if they stood by that number, that would be, we would be adequately supplied, clean, whatever the case may be. So, uh, at this point, I would recommend that we proceed with uh, the uh, district's choice, the administration's choice, um, and move forward. Brian, you mentioned that an alternative might be for the staff to do is to table this motion and do some additional due diligence. What additional due diligence would we do? Just reconsider all of the options that I went through, but you know this happened pretty quickly this afternoon. Um, you know, and, and uh, you know, as you know, we have thought more about it. You know, I, I do believe the one issue is if we do accept the bid as per recommended and proposed, that you know, board would be aware that we might have a vendor out there that would come back to us to say we did not award the lowest possible bid. I just want the board to be aware of that. So that I, you know, I didn't have time at five o'clock this afternoon to really. You know, look further into that. We did talk to council. Mr. Farley and I did get on the phone with the council. They basically said, in our opinion, they didn't meet the bid specs. Now, but you do run the risk of, you know, being accused of not taking a little bit. So I just want to make that awareness available to the board. So initially, ABM retracted their bid because of the errors that they found? 
Now, when we did the scope review, we asked all three members to bring in their cost sheets. And what basically ABM did is they brought in their cost sheet with here's what they actually did, and then they came in with different versions that they felt maybe meant closer to, you know, they had a version three that they said was probably more closer to the 40 hour bid and, and, what, and what they uh, thought was probably the closest to our actual spec. Again, ABM said they will stand by their supply number and believe that the 35 hour is, uh, or the number of hours they had put in the bid was uh, met the terms of the bid. Four required to award to the lowest responsible. And it seems like they initially made some identified their errors that came back at the last minute. Now, I've been on both, both end of, ends of this in my own company. And I, I like the recommendation as it's presented. There's too many questions. We're talking about the learning environment for kids that's had questions. So it seems to me that the recommendation as presented is, is the appropriate solution. I believe staff's comfortable with that, but it's, we certainly want to make the board aware of what the, you know, the issue could play out um, with, the, with the issue. So if the board is comfortable with that, we certainly could make a motion to move forward to the original recommendation. Um, I'd like to make a motion that uh, the Board of Education came the base bid of GCA Services Group in the amount of two million five ninety eight eight seventy nine. Do I hear a Yeah, about 
one sixth of, of these desktops are not to say kids couldn't go on the guidance office and use the computer, but I mean they're more designated for office staff. Are there any other questions? Um, that Mrs. Assembly called. I sure did. The other, the cumulative of these that we're dealing with, are we rolling into the tentative budget to what extent? The current um, IT budget, correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, either one of you are there, is around $2 million. $2.1, right? $2.1. So, with that being just held steady into next year, all of these expenses that you're approving here this evening would be just consistent money that we carry over for each year. So, that, you know, these costs would be there. You know, we have just, there's no increase in budget, it's simply rolling current budget into the next year. Are there any other questions? Comments? All right, Mrs. Sender, will you uh, call the vote, please? Mr. Roman? Yes. Mr. Paulson? Yes. Mr. Madison? Yes. Mrs. Swanson? Yes. Mr. Gambiani? Yes. Mr. Yes. 
Yes, the motion carries. Our, our next item is to approve the purchase of a network firewall. Fire As I understand that the current firewall is uh, too small now for the band and outdated. Okay, so do I hear a motion? Move to approve. Moved by Mrs. Swanson. Second. Seconded by Mr. Brownman. Is there any discussion? Mrs. Senator, will you call the roll, please? Mrs. Swanson? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mr. Brownman? Yes. Mr. Madison? Yes. Mr. Kimbiani? Yes. Yes. Mr. Paulson? Yes. Mrs. Sinterhart? Yes. Motion carries. The next item of business is approval of the Aramark Food Service contract renewal. Dr. Harris, do you have anything? I would just reinforce what's in the report there that we would be beginning our third year of a five-year contract that we approved two years ago. Um, this is an annual requirement of that contract to reapprove the food service contract moving forward. Mr. Carly, anything to add from your perspective? No, just that the renewal uh, requires that the uh, CPI is used for uh, the any increase. That was part of the original. And I just want to um, restate what uh, you responded to my question about this. If we had put this matter out to bid and we ran the risk, the real risk of receiving bids are much higher than it's in this contract. So the uh, renewal of this contract is, in this is um, a way to avoid that risk. That is one of the reasons why we went into a five year contract originally to keep that consistency, especially for budget purposes as well. Just a point of clarification for me. There's there's two numbers in here. There's the CPI at 1.7% and then there's the meal rate fees going up six cents. How are those two items related or how? Uh, last year with the Board of Education approved this contract. There was a number of changes going on with uh, child uh, nutrition uh, prompted by the first lady that uh, went through the legislature. And as part of that, there was an increase in uh, the types of foods that were served and going to be served. And there's a six cent, an allowable six cents uh, increase that was incorporated into the increase for the school district. Now we get that back from the federal government as, as part of that, that process. Uh, but the six cents is staying in place. We just want to make sure the board knew the six cents was staying in place. Healthier foods cost more. Is <laughs> the so, so food getting any better? Depends on who you ask. And that six cents is not an increase from last year. It's just a reiteration of the same expenditure for this coming year. Are there any more shots for this? I'm sorry. Uh, I just have a couple of questions. Uh, what's that? That 1.7 on an annualized basis. What's that mean year over year increase dollar wise to us? As far as the you know, overall cost of that increase, it's. Uh, the budget is 2 3, I believe, 2.3 million. So it's 1.7% of that. Uh, so it's uh, $23,000. A little more now. And the other question as it relates to the number of students using the service and the number of meals being dispersed throughout the schools, is that number going down or going up or staying level? It's actually going down, and it's actually going down nationwide uh, as the new, uh, the new uh, meal requirements went into place. Uh, Air, and talking with Airmark about because our numbers are going down, we are seeing uh, they're seeing that nationwide. In fact, there's I think YouTube videos out of Kansas for kids uh, requesting that they want more food uh, at their lunch time because the, the amount of food going uh, that's offered and what's going on the plate, kids are liking it, so we are seeing an increase going now in participation because of serving sizes. Right. I believe the federal government is re maybe reevaluating that somewhat, right? Am I correct, Melissa? So they're, uh, uh, they are looking at that. A question on this the, um, this is a food service, we, we incur a cost only here. Is there a revenue source that offsets this in some way? Sure, we, uh, 
obviously there, there's three main sources of revenue uh, that we receive up for actually. Obviously the, the sales of, to students for their pay students. We also have uh, uh, received about a million two in uh, budgeted right now in national school lunch program that we received back from the federal government. We also received uh, money from the state uh, national breakfast program. It's about two or three hundred thousand uh, dollars, I believe. And then we received state money, which is around thirty-five. Uh, I just looked at the numbers the other day. I think today we collected almost nine hundred thousand in sales. We've got about uh, another uh, eight hundred thousand in federal money that we received today, and we've got thirty-five thousand from the state. So we are out of pocket on this uh, half a million dollars or something. Well, we're still in progress. I mean, we have not over the, the national money, the national money tracks. Why? But generally, the program runs as a break even. Uh, we do try and balance that out. We don't try and run as a, a money maker, and we don't try and run it, uh, uh, you know, to lose money, obviously. So we do try and balance it out as best we can. But generally, it runs as a break even. That's the target every year: is to make sure we're cost neutral, providing service to the kid and the vendor and, and all of our. Needs as well in general. This is this lunch and or lunch and breakfast. Uh, lunch and breakfast. Well, if there, you need to have a motion uh, placed on the floor. So, what was I to make motion? Move we approve the air mark. Moved by Mr. Roman, second. Second. Yeah, my name is Second. Mrs. Sandy, will you call the roll, please? Second. Mr. Roman? Yes. Mr. Paulson? Yes. Mr. Gambiani? No. Mrs. Swanson? Yes. Mr. Madison? Yes. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, and now we come to the, the item that was pulled off the consent agenda, the approval of the resolution designating depositories. Um, may I have a motion, please? I move we approve the uh, resolution designating depositories. Okay. I second. Moved by Mr. Roman, seconded by Mrs. Swanson. Is there any discussion? Then we'll call for the vote. Mr. Roman? Yes. Mrs. Swanson? Yes. Mr. Paulson? Yes. Mr. Matheson? I'm saying. Mr. Yamiani? Yes. Mrs. Intergar? Yes. Motion carries. Now we move on to reports. We have a written report on uh, uh, FOIA activity and reports from board members. Are there any reports from board members? Mrs. Swanson. I actually do have one short report, and that's really more in the way of just um, letting people know that June 19th is the deadline if we want to put a resolution into IASB for our delegate assembly. And Brad may know a little bit about this because we sat through DuPage Division meetings. Uh, Mr. Madison may not know as much, but um, basically our school board association every year in the November uh, annual conference has a delegate assembly, and the delegate assembly takes into consideration resolutions that are um, put forth by member school districts. And those resolutions, uh, if they're approved by the delegate assembly, help guide the lobbying efforts of the association for that coming year. And so uh, there's a deadline to submit those resolutions. Any member dis district can submit a resolution. And the deadline is June 19th. And I don't know what other people have in mind, but I'm guessing that there may be 17 other districts that wish to, <laughs> to uh, put some sort of resolution forward regarding virtual charter schools and funding related to that. And so something around that, getting their arms around that. So. Um, if we do want to do that, we need to kind of assign that task because we have to vote on it as a board, um, which we mean we have one meeting to do that, our joint business meeting. Right. 
Yeah, because it's June 19th. So, so just wondering if people are interested in it. I suppose they could get to you and you know let you know. I'd be willing to work on it with somebody. Um, whatever the board chooses. Any comment? Sounds like a good idea. I support it. Is there any other topic that is sort of critical nature that we want? I would say the charter school issue, you know, even though we've got a couple fronts going on this, this issue is not over. I, I anticipate it playing out for a while. I do believe, I, and I know 17 other districts, that's going to be right beside us. And, you know, this is the tip of the iceberg. I mean, I believe this is a strategy by some people to have to pick away at public education, quite frankly. And, uh, you know, they're going after the money in this particular case, public money, uh, for a private company to run a school. That's essentially what's going on here. Um, and so, therefore, uh, I do think we need to pay some attention to that, see if there's any interest in one of those other, or several of those other districts to pursue something in the charter school arena. Couldn't sit here tonight and tell you what it would be, but I think we need to keep that in front of us um, pretty significantly. And that would be my, I certainly could work with any you know, board on that. Um, but I think we would need to talk with some of the other districts to see where their interest lies um, along with us. I would have a question about would we want to say anything about the pension funding in any way, uh, the pass down, the method of doing it, uh, you know, particularly because the pension costs tend to be in the northern area of the state that this is a big problem in, uh, whether we would want to address that. And then, in addition, the timing of uh, cash disbursements from the state as far as the flow of general state aid, etc. There has been lots of resolutions on um, funding issues. We certainly, there's a lot of stuff we could resurrect and certainly bring back. There is also several pension pieces, I know. And it's, it's basically anybody outside of the Chicago Public Schools. So it's suburban and downstate. So it's everybody with District 299. So that's CPS, the official district name. And, uh, you know, everybody else is in that same boat. So I know we would have a significant uh, group joining us on that. I do anticipate some action coming from that. We also, what happens is for those resolutions, and those are going to go into that. When other districts submit resolutions, we will bring those back here to this meeting, this meeting in, the, in the fall, and we approve the ones that we want to approve, the ones we support, and we have a designee that goes and represents us in that meeting. So there's a lot out there that. We certainly can pursue one of those that have already been there. There's a lot of them already there. So that, that implies that they will reappear. I, I guess I'm only concerned that they will. Absolutely. We certainly can pursue it. Well, what I was going to say is, um, you know, we can take a look. I would suggest that people think about it because I just sort of hit everybody off the top of your heads. Think about it, get those ideas to Mrs. Zintahar, and then you, you can designate somebody to put together one or more resolutions to bring to the board on June 19th. And, and it's good to work with districts, but on the other hand, we don't have to do that. We can do it on our own. We're pretty good about getting a lot of our resolutions passed. Was, was there, well, how many uh, resolutions did we present last year? Was there just one there, three? I think there were, there were, well, the year before last, I think there were three that we presented, but then I think last year we, um, we voted with some districts who, uh, who took a stand against the recommendation of the Resolutions Committee, and we were instrumental in helping uh, win, uh, yeah, win those, uh, uh, those, those battles, so to speak. So uh, our voice, I think, is definitely heard, and I think, uh, you know, if anybody, uh, well, if, and also Ms. Madison, there, there is, and I don't know when you will receive it, but you should receive uh, a listing of position statements by the IASB, which then give, will give you an idea of what they're lobbying for right now. So then we can go from there and just see what, what do we need to add to that. And the, the thing that stands out is, the, the charter school issue, the whole charter school issue. So, so do we want to say that we'll definitely work on a charter school and then if anybody else has any other ideas, uh, get them to me and then we'll, um, we'll go from there. I do believe the pension issue is also, we need to at least pay attention. I'm positive it's going to be there, but we'll see. But we can certainly 
jump off. I'm mostly concerned about Pence because it tends to be a northern part of the state that has the bigger problem economically, and, and accordingly, I, I don't want to rely on the southern part of the state to make that resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Swanson. Thank you. 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 Thank you.